Honorable colleagues, the third order of the day is a motion on maltreatment and institutional racial discrimination against Nigerians living in China by the government of China, standing in the names of Honorable Benjamin Kalu and nine other honorable members. Honorable Kalu is invited to move the motion. Honorable Kalu. Please, order, please. Order, please. Thank you. Be seated, members. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Colleagues. My name is Benjamin Okezie Kalo. I represent the good people of Nigeria, starting from Ben, the federal constituency. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Colleagues, I'm from Abia State. This morning, I rise to humbly seek the leave of this house to present a motion on maltreatment and institutional acts of racial discrimination against Nigerians living in China by the government of China. I do this in conjunction with nine other honorable members. The House is aware that as a result of the mutually beneficial diplomatic and economic relationship between Nigeria and China, about 10,000 Nigerians, including investors, traders, workers, and students, currently reside in and around Guangzhou in the Guangdong province of the People's Republic of China and have generated massive trade volumes between the two countries such that on 2019 alone, Nigeria-China trade value was worth over $8.6 billion. The House recalls that sometimes on April 8, 2020, photos and videos appeared on various social media outlets depicting institutionalized acts of racial discrimination maltreatment, xenophobic assault, embarrassment, legal detentions, illegal detentions, and forceful eviction of Nigerians and other Africans living in Guangzhou. Consigned that under the pretext of curbing the spread of COVID-19, which ironically originated in Wuhan, China, several kinds of maltreatment of Nigerian citizens in Guangzhou have been perpetrated by Chinese people and authorities, including wrongful confiscation of Nigerian international passports, prolonged and illegal detention of Nigerians in the name of mandatory quarantine, despite their having certificates of clean health, and no recent travel history. Outright refusal to test or release the test results and the eviction of Nigerians from their homes and hotel accommodation, etc. The House is worried that in the exercise of its function of protecting the interests of nationals of a sending state, as provided for under Article 5 of the Vienna Convention on Consular Relations, on Consular Relations 1963. Order, please. Honorable Olugas, take your seat. Honorable colleagues, please, let's maintain social distance. Let's sit in our seats so that we can get out of here. Uh, Honorable Kalu is moving a very important motion. Please, let's be attentive. Under Article 5 of the Vienna Convention of, on Consular Relations, 1963, the Nigerian Consul General was treated in clear violation of Article 40 of the said treaty which requires the receiving state to treat consular officers with due respect and to take all appropriate steps to prevent attacks on their person's freedom or dignity. The House also recalls the troubling case of Mr. Felix Awa Elijah, a Nigerian citizen and legal resident in China who mysteriously disappeared after his abduction and prolonged illegal detention by Chinese police authorities sometime around 6 February 2019, and of which all letters and appeal from Honorable Benjamin Carlo, his representative in the House of Representatives, 
were ignored by the Chinese authorities. The House also consigned that the action of the Chinese authorities do not reciprocate the favorable treatment their nationals enjoy in Nigeria, but have instead put a strain on the diplomatic and economic relations between Nigeria and China, thereby endangering Nigerian businesses in China valued at billions of dollars. Also worried that the actions and inactions of the Chinese authorities clearly establish a trend of racial discrimination as defined in Article 1, Sub 1 of the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination to mean any distinction, exclusion, restriction, or preference based on race, color, descent, or national or ethnic origin, which has the purpose or effect of nullifying or impairing the recognition, enjoyment, or exercise on an equal footing of human rights and fundamental freedom in the political, economic, social, cultural, or any other field of public life. And as such, actions and inactions are in breach of several other international conventions to which Nigeria and China are signatories. The House also is worried that the actions and inactions of Chinese authorities clearly establish a trend of of racial discrimination as defined in Article 1.1 of International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination to mean any distinction, exclusion, and restriction of preference based on race, color. The House is reminded that China is under an obligation to guarantee equality between citizens and non-citizens in the enjoyment of their civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights to the extent recognized under the international law and enunciated especially in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, and the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. The House is also aware that the Honorable Speaker of the House, Right Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, the Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Geoffrey Onyema, and Nigerian Ambassador to China, His Excellency Ahmed Jida, undertook various independent and coordinated intervention, including meetings with the Chinese ambassador to Nigeria, Dr. Zhu Pinjong, to register Nigerians' displeasure with the incident. The House further consigned that despite the assurances of the Chinese government to arrest the situation, the maltreatment of Nigeria and China persists. The House acknowledges that it has become imperative to take further action to ensure the safety and welfare of Nigerians in line with the provisions of Section 14 to be of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999. The House therefore resolves, one, to condemn in its entirety the maltreatment and discrimination, maltreatment, discrimination and xenophobic attack against Nigerians in the Republic, Republic of China, People's Republic of China, two, urge the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and all relevant ministries, departments, and agencies to, as a matter of urgency, ensure that all Nigerians who wish to return home, including Nigerians that only visited for business, Nigerians with any form of travel documents and identification, Nigerians with passport but expired visas, Nigerians with passport and valid visas who have been ejected by house owners, Nigerians who have tested negative to COVID-19, are evacuated for, from China and quarantined upon arrival. Three, the House also urged the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, the, Fe the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and all relevant ministries, departments and agencies to provide all necessary financial and other assistance to affected Nigerian citizens in China who wish to seek redress in any local or international court for breach of fundamental rights, loss of property, or any other actionable cause occasioned by this maltreatment or discrimination in China. The House resolved also to mandate the Committees on Interior, Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring and Commerce to investigate the Nigerian Immigration Corporate Affairs Commission, Nigerian Content and Development Monitoring Board. I take that again. Mandate the Committees on Interior, Local Content and commerce to investigate the Nigerian Immigration Corporate Affairs Commission, Nigerian Content and Development Monitoring Board, and any other relevant ministry, department or agency to check the validity of all immigration documents of every Chinese person in Nigeria 
and the expatriate quota of all the Chinese businesses in Nigeria to ascertain the number of illegal and undocumented Chinese immigrants in Nigeria and to report back in four weeks. Five, also mandate the committees on interparliamentary relations, foreign affairs, human rights, and diaspora to ascertain the extent of violation of rights of Nigerians in China, as well as losses arising from such maltreatment, and to further engage the Chinese parliament appropriately to register Nigerians, national assemblies, condemnation of the maltreatment, discrimination, and xenophobic attack against Nigerians in China, and to ensure the succession of such action by its people and government, and that treatments meted to Nigerians are compatible with China's human rights obligation, and to report back within four weeks for further legislative action. Five, seek the concurrence of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I so move. Second. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and my honorable colleagues. I am Honorable Ferdinand Dozinwankwo, member representing the Group of Njikoka and all charging of the Federal Constituency and from Anambra State. I rise to support a very wonderful motion, heavily moved by my colleague, Carlo. I, I show support. Thank you. Honorable Carlo, I think your motion totally covers everything. Maybe a, a debate will be almost overkill. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very well crafted motion. So I'll just put the question. Those in support, please say aye. aye. Those against, please say nay. Ayes have it. 